Hello, everybody, and welcome to this week's episode of Magically Cruising, the cruise podcast where we share our personal reviews and tips to help you make the most out of your next cruise. My name's Kira, and I'm an independent travel agent specializing in all things cruise, Disney, and North America, and I'm joined by my fellow co host. Hi, I'm Sarah, and I'm a cruise writer, and I write over at Cruising for All cruising with kids today guys we are going to talk about river cruising and this is going to be the start of a mini series similar to how we did our drinks package series and we're going to start the first of our river cruising series so we're going to spend the next couple of episodes just talking about kind of our personal experience of river cruising but then we have some very exciting guests as well joining us in the next couple of episodes as well we're going to share their first-hand experience of river cruising as well um so sarah i guess the best place to start off with is river cruising is quite special to us in this podcast because it's how we met Um, So before that episode, however, and we can talk about our time on board Avalon in a bit, but before that, had you river cruised before that experience as well? Yes, I'd been on one river cruise and that was on the Amma Magna, which at the time when that launch was just, well, I think it still is the widest river cruise ship and incredible. That was my first river cruise uh, with my husband, Chris, and we just absolutely fell in love with it. I say my first experience was the river cruise we met. So that was a clear conference. It was a river cruise conference. Um, So me and Phil did join that. I've always been fascinated by river cruising. And I I always had that perception as well, equally before I went into it, that a lot of people have. Because the way it was advertised in the UK, it was always advertised before the kind of like early afternoon, what I like to call the kind of old people sat at home, you know, that time when nobody else is at home. And they kind of put the um, sponsored by ads on, don't they? And they're usually on between things like the Agatha Christie murder mystery things. Um, <laughs> and it always gave the impression that it was very much aimed at kind of like the older, uh, genteel crowd. Um, so I did. I'll be candid. I had that impression that river cruising was for kind of the old generation. However, I was exhausted by the end of our river cruise because we were so <laughs> active the entire time. We were literally walking pretty much every single day for miles every day and seeing so much that I was like, no, you definitely need to be fit and active to do a river cruise because you do a lot in a short space of time. When people ask about ocean cruising that have never been on a cruise before, they always say, well, the ships are too big and I'd never find my way around. And and I think this is the polar opposite. It's a lot more intimate. Um, If you ask my husband, he would say, if he got a choice, he'd only ever sail on river. Yeah loved it that much i think it's the thing that you can get off and like i mean vienna was the only place we got a bus and it was no biggie Uh, but you get off and you're in town bratislavia you're walking in you're getting off and you're going to a bar or a cafe for a coffee or a beer or and everything's there and you just don't get that with a cruise and i think that's the thing in it like we all love obviously we love cruising we love ocean cruising and that fact that ocean cruising usually the ports you kind of pull into a in general kind of out on the outskirts a little bit they'll always advertise like it's in paris but you're normally docking in like um la rochelle <laughs> london <laughs> yeah, southampton london you know nearby um and it's it, it, i get why they do it because you can technically get to london for those destinations and they are one of the easiest ways to get to that port type of thing but on river it's totally different you know you are definitely in most cases docking right in the heart of either the very small town or village or you are in the centre of the city. So the river cruise we did was popular because, and we did the Danube, and we did, um, what did we did? Uh, Budapest, the Bratislava, and we did Vienna all in one voyage as well. So you get to do three capital cities, isn't it? Which is what the unique thing about doing the Danube is. You get to do three capital cities on one sailing, and we did a six night, I think it was, wasn't it? Um, so yes. you get to do that. But then we also then did a lot of smaller towns as well, towns I've never even heard of type of thing along the way as well. Um, so you got to explore kind of, you know, really amazing cosmopolitan cities that the hotels you could be paying easily, you know, three, four, five hundred pounds a night to stay in the heart of the city. And we got to go off off a beaten track as well and do really small towns as well and got to see kind of the more authentic side of Europe as well, rather than the well-traveled, well-touristed ports as well. And that's, I'm mean, just looking now, Avalon and Vision, which was the one that we sailed on together, has 67 suites and 16 cabins. So that's, what's that, 60, 16 Seven. It's about 140 something, I think, isn't it? It's about 140, I think they say. Is that say what they is... hold at full capacity? And so. there's all... it's like... It says here 47 crew. Passenger to staff ratio is huge. I mean, obviously, we know the service is just incredible. And I think that it's that whole, like you say, it's like a luxurious boutique hotel on the water. If you're seasick, you're not going to be seasick on a river cruise because you can't feel it move. I think there's so... I mean, I love ocean, cru- ocean cruising. Obviously, that that's how I make my living. Same as you. I've got the rebook for next year but ocean cruise uh, river cruising is you've got to try it i think you've got and it's 
I don't think it's just for old people, definitely not. I think no. we want to take our boys because it's like now they're older and you can take them for a beer. Joe's nearly 18, Jack's 23. To stop at a port and get off and, and go and enjoy the nightlife, which is just going to be fabulous. I think that's the thing in there. Of the perception and the reality are always different. So you get this with Ocean as well. And I... And, and again, I think the industry is moving forward as well. I think river cruise is becoming more and more popular and more and more ships and brands are coming online as well. So it is, I, when we did the, the conference, we visited 10 river ships in the space of 24, in the space of 48 hours, which overwhelmed me to the point that I was like, I can't see any more ships now. They all are starting to blur. But it did go to showcase how different they are from kind of the entry level four star river cruise options, right the way up to the ultra lux type of thing where they've got a retractable roof on the pool. You know, they've got hot tubs and they've got spas. They had a salt room on board one of them. So you can totally, if you wanted to go out and high end your trip, you can go and stay on, you know, someone like Emeralds and Scenic and do that and um, Uni, um, Uniworld as well. They've got really high end, you know, design ships type of thing, both whether you want something a bit more boutique or something that's a bit more contemporary design. Right the way down to kind of the entry level cruises where you've got APT, um, you've got Travel Marvel, which is a four star brand. You've got Crossy Europe as well. And you're still going to have that fantastic river cruise experience. But the inclusions, the level of service, and the accommodations are going to be different on all of them. So whether you're somebody who wants kind of a bit more relaxed, a bit more laid back, a bit more traditional, a bit more formal, very much like ocean, river cruising is exactly the same as well. You're going to find a right mix across the board of the type of accommodations and facilities on board as well. I'm really surprised you said that APT was, I mean, obviously I've not sailed on it, but it didn't look four-star to me. No, no. At no, all. Travel Marvel, sorry, is, yeah. So, APT Travel Marvel are technically the same company, but two different brands. Right, um, okay. So, AB, APT is the five-star brand, and they are very much aimed at the high end, whereas Travel Marvel is owned by APT, but is more four-star, is kind of deemed to be a bit more entry-level. Was that Vega? Was that the one with the Irish bar at the back? Yes. Which sounds yeah, that... really, really tacky, but it's not, is it? Oh, it was it amazing, was wasn't it? Super stylish, yeah. yeah. I was a bit hungover when we went in there. <laughs> <laughs> I was like... Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that ship, and, and I guess we don't want to give too many spoilers away, but Ape and Travel Marvel are joining us hopefully in the next week or two, um, and they can tell a little bit more about their their offering with APT and Travel Marvel and explain that a bit better. Um, but their ship definitely did hit hit quite hard with me because, as you say, I was very shocked when they said it's a four star experience. I was like, "Where? <laughs> so, do you want me to find you the fifth star? Because I can I could put it yeah. on the door type of thing." I was very impressed with it, but it was very relaxed type of thing. It was very casual. Yeah. Even same with Avalon. Avalon's very very comfortable in the five star territory. Um, very relaxed though. You know, I didn't feel out of place wearing casual clothes. Oh. I felt very relaxed on board. And, you know, it didn't feel like I was, I needed to dress up and be formal on board because it's a very, very relaxed experience, which I like. That's my, that's my I, taste personally. So I think that's why Avalon resonated so well with me. I loved Avalon. I mean, obviously, again, another spoiler, but we have got one of our, or maybe one or two of our favorite people from Avalon coming on very soon. <laughs> we love them. But the ship, and I just remember one day I was, because... I think we need to explain actually what what's included on a river cruise. So yeah. on Avalon, yeah. all of your your trips are included, and you every morning you c- you can book for day before. You go and get your headset, and you get off the ship, and you meet your guide. You stood with a stick, and honestly, there's no other way to see a city. There's short tours. They they show you around. They show you all the places of interest, and then you can go and do your own thing and choose to explore more. So that's that's included in the cruise. So Donna. My other half of cruising with all wants to do every trip, and I want to do them. But what wants to rest? She doesn't seem to want to rest. She's like, what? What's those buddies? She put the batteries in, and she's yeah, like, oh, the cheer yourself, buddy. Cheer yourself, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> like, I remember one day you all went off on a trip, and I said, I, no, I need to work, so I stayed. And it was what they were doing was they was docking, and then you all went off on a coach, and we went yep. to the next port. And I sat on that ship. There was hardly anybody on there working writing my newsletter thinking oh this is just the life it was yeah, incredible yeah. and that was in april it was it was hot wasn't it I we mean, had glorious close. weather didn't we yeah it was absolutely oh, was... beautiful that day you said other shit we went and actually did um mass uh, mass house and um concentr- not concentration camp work camp and it's somewhere i would never in a million years ever think would be a tourist destination because you know it's a form of working camp um and because, again, as you say, because the, it's included, if, if they would have turned around and said to me, you've got to pay £200 to do this, I would have been like, no, thanks, I'm fine. But the fact that it was included, I felt obliged to take advantage of every single um, excursion that was available to me. And I'm so glad that I did because we went oh. to the um, we went to the Win- um, Windsor Krems um, wine bar as well the, few, um, the day before. Or was it in the morning? I can't remember. It all turned into a blur because we did so much. 
Um, we did the Winter Krems wine tour as well. So that was amazing. And then, we, as you say, then you have the choice. You could either free explore and join the ship down the river if you wanted to, because you can borrow one of the onboard bikes and you can bike along the river if you wanted to, or you could go and do the, one of the excursions. There was a multi, there was multiple choices. Um, if for those who didn't want to go and do the concentration camp, you could go and do, I can't remember what it was, but there was some another tour that was included. Um, or as you chose to do, you could see on the ship as well. I was kicking myself because, as you say, the weather was gorgeous that day as well. And I was like, well, I really ship. want my like river cruise dream of sat there with the with the door open, you know, watching the river go by with a glass of wine. That I wanted that dream the entire cruise. <laughs> I spent <laughs> most of my time, you know, going out and exploring just because, as you say, <laughs> there's so many amazing activities and they're all included. At least with Avalon, there are a couple of brands that don't include excursions, but then that's because the price to get on is cheaper. But Avalon yeah. and a lot of the premium I river know, ships, they will do. Yeah, uh, yeah. I think um, Uni will tend to as well. Um, Arosa, I think, includes some as well. I believe again, check all. We can check that. But on the whole, all river cruising is generally mm. all inclusive um, to a certain extent. Yeah, and with Avalon, you get um, drinks, you get wine, don't you, with your meals in the evening as well. <laughs> and they've now introduced since we were on board, probably after feedback from us drinking so much, they've introduced happy hour now as well, where there is included cocktail e- each evening as well. Um, so that's now included on Avalon. So you can get an evening cocktail and your wine with meals as well. Um, others will have different options. Uh, Emma walked away, that was the same. So it was um, a cocktail hour for dinner and then wine and beer with on soft drinks with lunch and dinner. And then they'd, they'd just randomly come around with a tray of spritzers in the afternoon or cocktails or they'd say, it's Ger- go, as you was going through Passau and they'd say, right, we're in Germany, come to the back of the ship and we've got Frankfurters and beer and it was... I just, I loved every second of being on the river. It's, I mean, for me, I thought it's just water. <laughs> but um, yeah. yeah, I loved it. And I think the, the cabins are spacious as well, aren't they? So, you know, you get lots of lots of extra. So when people look at the price, they think, oh, it's a bit more. But actually, when you look at what's included, you're not actually spending any more than you're going to spend at yeah. sea. And oh. it's just a different kind of holiday. It's not one that's better. They're just no different experiences, I'd say. I think it's worth pointing out it is very different. So a lot of people do quickly make the quick judgment of like, oh, it's just a smaller r- cruise. And yeah. th- there's a lot of similarities as in you float to where you're going to, but it's a very different type of holiday. Yeah. So like Ocean is you get into port, you know, normally by 7, 8 in the morning and then the ship stays there and then you get back on them by about 5 p.m., things like that. Um, the meals are always fixed. You get entertainment type of thing. River ships by their size because they're a lot smaller. The entertainment is a lot more intimate. So, in our case with Avalon, they brought on um, local trio, didn't they? They had a trio of um, performers when we were in Vienna who uh, performed in the opera there. They performed one evening. It wasn't our cup of tea. I think we decided to drink <laughs> through most of the performance. Well, it, it was lovely was to good. have, though, wasn't it? It was lovely to have. It was really lovely. And the atmosphere was amazing. They were incredible performers. They had brought on dancers, I believe, later on in the river, but I think I went to bed early that night. Um, they just bring on local performance and local talent type of thing as you're in the local area. It's Again, it's in the front lounge, so it's really intimate. As you say, the menus change constantly. I think the big thing to say, though, and we've touched upon it, is, is what you can sometimes visit more than one town or port in a day. So you can get off in the morning and maybe explore one small village and then get back on the ship, or I should say make your own way and join the ship later on and get off on another one in the afternoon. Some of them do include overnights as well, so you can have the overnight but then go back to your ship as well, so you can go watch. So I think the guys did, didn't they? There was a group of people, and this one was a chargeable. There was a chargeable excursion to go watch the opera, wasn't there, in yeah, I believe, Vienna. Vienna? Yeah, it was Vienna. I was, I, I was so annoyed I didn't do that. I was so mad at myself that I didn't do that. I can't think what we did. But I think, did we go for drinks? No, I can't remember now. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because that is a good thing. If you're, if you're late in ship it, on in port, then you could just get off and have a wander. So yeah. you're not necessarily going to leave at five o'clock. It might be 10 o'clock, side away. So you yeah. can go and have drinks. And um, and you can see, that. I mean, if you're watching on YouTube, if not, you can't see. But some of the ships, most of them have hot tubs, but many do have poles. So you can choose. I prefer a more con- contemporary design, yes. definitely. Yeah. Um, but a lot do have poles. And for me, if I was choosing a river cruise, for me, it'd be a pool or a hot tub. We didn't even go in it, though, did we? Because we didn't no, have time. No, not once. And I was adamant to. But again, we were so busy the entire time. And I don't think well, I got the chance to kind of... And that, that sounds bad, as in, like, we didn't have any time to ourselves. We chose. The choices I made meant that I was busy, <laughs> you know, exploring the ports. We absolutely... As Sarah's mentioned, Sarah could have stayed on the ship. She chose to work, but she could have stayed on the ship and read instead. Type of thing. There was plenty of time to do that. You didn't have to get off. 
but just again when and this was post covid as well wasn't it so this was literally yeah. the march the year after we opened back up again so i think that zest for getting out and exploring was definitely with everyone on the ship i think the ship was majority empty apart from those of us who had to do a little bit of work while we were on board um but that zest because you are so close so it's it's not like one of those things and i do on an ocean all the time I'm like, oh you've got to get the bus to get to the town and then you've got to get in there so i sometimes make the choice to stay on but because you could literally see the town from the ship, you're like, oh, it's just across the road, so I might as well get off. What was that one that we, I don't know if you and Phil went to it, but I mean, this this just sums up river cruising. The Donna and I went to Franz Ferdinand's castle. We met his granddaughter, and I mean, it was amazing because this is like a massive person in history, and because it's small and intimate, you can do those things. You wouldn't be able to do that on a cruise mm-hmm. and go and yep. stand in a drawing room and tell her the story, the car's there, the shooting, and... You wouldn't be able to do that on a if there was hundreds of you because they wouldn't let you in. I'll tell you what I did instead, and that tour was removed after based on the feedback we all gave. <laughs> but we yeah. did the beekeeper experience instead. Do you remember it? It was in the well, schedule. So we went, and the concept of it was great. So we got to go see a beekeeper who didn't keep bees. <laughs> right. So we spent an hour learning about how bees make honey. Didn't get to see any bees making honey. But then we then got to sample pollen <laughs> and drink honey wine for a little bit. Wow. And like, it was on paper, it was great. But we were like, you've got to deal with the hour talk, not being part of the experience. But then the second half of it was then you got to make, uh, I forgot what they're called. We got to make the pastry horns with the cream inside them. Oh, I remember you bringing them this. That was amazing. The second half of it was really good. But the, the, the bee experience, so a lot of us were a bit like, we've just been talked to for an hour and they got to try some pollen, which tasted like nothing. Um, but no, the second half was really good. And they took the feedback. They were very gracious. They, took the they were like, yeah, no, we're trialing in that res now. And they have, I've been told anyway, they've taken it off um, the activities. But um, the second one was amazing. We got to go to this little tiny bakery for this woman. And all they make is just pastries all the time. And we all got to take it in turns to make the pastry and take myself, sit them away afterwards. That was really cool. I really loved doing that. And again, we were in groups of, I think, by the time we split it down, I think groups of eight of us making these like little horns of pastries. We got to, um, what's the word, when you get to fold the pastry in to put the butter oh, into right. it to make like, the croissant type thing. That was really cool. And I love that. And again, we got to speak to the owner of the bakery and the, her assistant. They were telling us about the festivals they make these horns for, the how many thousands they make each week and how come the whole region buys from them. So like, as you say, it's that very much personal connection. It's small, yeah. local business. And the beekeeper, to be fair to me, was a beekeeper, just he didn't keep the bees anywhere near where the ship got to. Well, so there was imagine? like this little pop. <laughs> oh my God, that had just been awful. I, I think half of it, I've been very, very, very hot on it, but it was like an hour talk and then about 30 minutes of tasting. If we had maybe like a half hour talk, half hour tasting, it would have been perfect. But I think right. by about 20 minutes into the talk, a lot of us were kind of stood around in this little park somewhere watching this guy talk with some kids playground in the background going, like, is this it? What are we doing next? Yeah. Um, but like I say, it was the first time they'd done that post-COVID. They knew they had a load of travel agents and press on board. And they did tell us up front, we're trying this, so give us your feedback on it. So it's not like everyone got to do that. They were very transparent about what we were getting into. Um but that was that was one tour out of I lost camp. We must have done five excursions throughout that tour type of thing, and still had a lovely time. But yeah, you I think you picked the right one on that day. Yeah, well, oh, it, honestly, I still that that'll be a, one of those moments where on a trip that you just think oh, I'll treasure for her because it was amazing. And I remember she, she gave us these pennies, and Donna was just so overwhelmed. <laughs> it's, it's, it was a chocolate coin, but Donna was just like. <laughs> Oh, she was just <laughs> because this this woman was just I think she was the granddaughter or the grandson's wife, but she was so glamorous and mm. like I think someone from Monaco. It was oh, it was amazing. But who would you think? I mean, we're digressing because we just that's that's where we met. <laughs> um, and the weird thing is for anyone listening that we didn't know each other at all. No, nope. and we just met because. Phil, Kieran's husband, is gluten free, and we by accident got stuck. There was nowhere to sit, so I was like, "Can we sit with it, you?" And then we were in the sit next cabins next door. We we? Were, weren't we? Yeah. So our actual, if you look on our profile picture for the podcast, you'll see there's literally in the M and the C. There's that is from our Avalon River cruise when we realised you were. I think I was doing a cabin tour or something, wasn't it? And I was no, we could hear us laughing. You yeah. could hear me <laughs> laughing, <laughs> and you come right to say, "Hey, like, why are you next to us?" But that picture is literally, as we realised, we were next door to each other. We were sticking our heads out of the side of the, of the balcony <laughs> and we spotted that we were next door to each other. Well, I've just got a picture come up of the lounge on Avalon, Avalon and Vision. I mean, it's, it's a stunning, 
stunning ship. Yeah. It really is beautiful. I think for people to explain, so most of these ships are usually two or three decks at most type of thing. So usually your lower deck is where you'll have your dining room. So that's where you'll eat your meals in. Then you'll have cabins. Now, generally, the lower deck cabins will be the ones that are at a water level, so they won't be balconies. So if you're looking for that kind of French-style balcony, you're not going to get them on the lower levels, but they're going to be the cheaper cabins. So they will usually have a window, but you can't open it because as I say, it is at the window level. Some ships, that's the space they'll use then for things like the um, gyms, and some of them have got saunas on board and things like that as well. So that lower deck is usually kept for those facilities and the cheaper cabins. Then as you go up, usually onto deck two is where you'll find kind of a lot of the French style balconies then as well. So that's where you're going to get those lovely ones. We were seeing in a panorama suite on our cruise, which is probably one of the nicer suites at, at, at River, I guess, because that's the one that has the bed that face out to the water. It's a bit of a unique feature mm. for Avalon. Um, so again, really lovely. And then that's usually then the level that the land will be on. That's usually where you'll go for kind of your evening drinks and your briefings in the mornings and that type of thing. Every ship's different with what they do at the back. So in the case of Avalon, they've got a really small um, lounge at the back as well that has like um, snacks available throughout the day. So you can get like warm cookies and things like that throughout the day. You can make yourself tea and coffee and they had um, still sparkling water available for you to take anytime you wanted. And then you go up to the third deck, which is then the the sun deck or the the top, the rooftop deck then, which again, they're all different, but generally that's where the sun loungers. There'll be some, some of them have outdoor bistro. So ours did, they had an outdoor barbecue. They did one night, uh, one evening as we sailed. Um, they're all different in kind of what they offer, but that's the general layout of a ship. They'll normally have a lounge at the front, cabins at the back, with a bar or something at the back of the ship as well. Um, so really small, really easy to walk around. You can't get lost because it's one corridor to the front and the back. They're stunning. They are They are beautiful. This, uh, the sort of person that would enjoy it, I would say. I mean, all right, I'm not saying you don't get older people. on. There's nothing wrong with older people. No, 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 um, no. And what, one thing I say to people is when do you go into a hotel in, say, Tenerife, and look at the age range of the hotel. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. You just don't, do you? And so, but I think it's quite mixed. And I think because it's more up and coming now, River, that absolutely, yeah. People and couples are starting to do it more, and families, which we'll touch on in a minute. Um, but it's for pe- I think this is for people that like city breaks. If you don't like city breaks, you're not going to enjoy it because no. because you can't just some worship. You could, you could just not get off the ship. That is an option. Yeah. There are cheaper ways to worship the sun, though, isn't there, than by river. You definitely need to be somebody who wants to go and explore. You could totally have a day or an afternoon doing it. Um, But I think if you're somebody who wants to go and kind of do a sun break, there are cheaper ways to do it. You're definitely somebody who likes cuisine, likes, you know, yeah, Yeah. city breaks and explore it. So actually, let's let's touch on the food. Uh, I mean, obviously, I've only ever sailed with two brands. And I think I started quite at the top, which... um, Best way to do it. <laughs> yeah. uh, they both both of these ships. I would I wouldn't go and personally would go on a ship with a, just a buffet. It just because no. I like a restaurant at night. So both of them did like a buffet style lunch, and I think you could go in the restaurant for both of them for lunch as well, couldn't you? Uh, breakfast. So Avalon you... was buffet for breakfast and for lunch. Um, there were could... mains and there were mains you could order from the menu from my memory. Um, oh, that's right. Yeah, was, yeah. It, but it yeah. was majority. Um, breakfast and lunch were buffet style and then the year evening meal was done then in table service and it was a lovely lovely room wasn't it, it was, so on yeah. Emma Magna I think there was three restaurants I can't even remember if there was a buffet maybe there was a buffet in one of the restaurants for breakfast but being and it misses eggs benedict I just always order that anyway so yeah but the food was outstanding I mean I, I, there wasn't and because of being gluten free and I wasn't gluten free on Emma but by the time I'd gotten to Avalon I was they were amazing uh, but I, I had fillet steak if you know, because if I was oh don't he's like, do you want steak there <laughs> yes that's the thing it's the sheer choice though isn't it like you I know, know it's a small ship with a small crew so I was expecting to have you know just like one or two choices but we had a full choice menu this like on par with what you get on some ocean menu some night type of thing with a choice of four five six mains and multiple desserts if you wanted them there was tons of option for the buffet so whether you wanted to have like a, a British style breakfast so obviously the different brands will cater to different markets so I think like a roaster is generally more German isn't it uh, more German and a bit more French am I right I think they do have British and American as well though they do but they just cater to more yeah. if you get I mean so you're going to find a more continental breakfast on a yes. roaster they will still have a British style breakfast, but it's going to be more continental. Whereas Avalon is more into the British and the American market, so they tend to have a bit more of an American style breakfast with pancakes and things like that. It's just a small observation. Again, they all have fantastic food, but just the heritage of the brand will just mean which way the menu skews. But you can definitely get a continental. You can also get a British slash or American style breakfast on all yeah. the river ships that I've experienced, at least anyway. 
I think Crozzy was the closest to being purely continental, but I think definitely yeah, I... my time on Avalon and Uni World, we definitely had a inter- yeah, I'd say an international breakfast at least anyway. I say this because it's something I'm really passionate about. <laughs> well, <laughs> breakfast, breakfast buffets. If you're going to do a buffet, it has to be done the right way. And I generally tend towards an American slash British buffet. So whenever I get a continental European buffet, I'm always a little bit disappointed because it's just very different to what we get. I cannot remember my breakfast on it. So we on the, the last... What was it called? Clear Conference. We did a few ships. Stressful, packing and unpacking, but it then was, also really, really good to see. Yeah. So we stayed on Quasi. No, we didn't stay on Quasi. We stayed on Uniworld when the, the, the evening meal was incredible. It can't was. Uniworld was phenomenal. Um, Emma, yeah, I, I can't find fault with Emma as a brand. It's just like everything's perfect and the breakfast is amazing. The, um, and we stayed on Tui, which was good. It was good. Um, yeah. But it's a four star, so it's... It, it's it not is. as upscale, but the ships are stunning. The ship, but the food, yeah. I just, I noticed the difference between Tui and Emma, definitely. And to be fair to Tui as well, because Tui got quite a lot of, I wouldn't say negative feedback, but they just launched that ship literally at the conference. Um, so I know there was a lot of bedding in that was happening with Tui, um, but you cannot fault their price points for it. Their prices with flights no. included for Tui River it, are incredible. So if you're somebody who wants an entry level into cruising, then definitely look at Tui River Cruising. Like, would you get a better experience with the other brands? Absolutely. But as an entry-level product to try River Cruising, Tui have a fantastic price. The downside to it is very little, little is included. I believe like the menus were quite limited and compared to the menus we would have had on some of the more premium brands, I know they had very limited choices and there was a bit of a feedback of it's very British-styled food. Um, so quite limited, small, small portions and things like that. I know excursions are chargeable as well on Tui, whereas obviously on the premium brands, all the excursions were included and we had multiple choices as well of excursions we could do. I think this is one that we maybe need to get Laura on. So anyone that listened to the mm-hmm. Arvia episode, Laura from Cruise Lifestyle went on to yes. Tui and I was very much like, I'm sure it's lovely. <laughs> well, <laughs> that, that- <laughs> you really enjoyed it they booked they booked a suite because that was the one thing right like donna and i had a, a cabin it was twin beds and i couldn't get to the toilet in the night because my suitcase was at the end of the bed so i had to climb over donna while she was asleep which i think i scared her obviously <laughs> um, <laughs> it's a good job with such good friends <laughs> to wake up and get over it in the middle of the night after wine jeez um, but, um, yeah, it's not. I wouldn't think I'm going to book that. So, but then Laura booked a suite, and the suites yeah. were massive and really luxurious. Yeah. And she had an amazing time. So, I think maybe yeah. we need to get Laura on to talk about that. Um, because this also comes back to though our premium versus value podcast yes. as well. Though, of obviously everyone has different expectations, but at the heart of it, you're still going to have the same core experience. You're still going to go to amazing ports and experience amazing destinations. Just the experience between that will be slightly different depending on who you choose to cruise with. There's no right or wrong with it. So even though me and Sarah personally gravitate towards premium, that doesn't mean that value is any lesser or or worse off or you're going to have a bad time. It's just we tend to be premium cruisers. That's just our personal preference. Um, so it sounds like we're being really hard on it. It's not or all. It's just that if we were choosing, we would lean more towards the premium brand. So don't think we're... We're pooing on, on, you know, the value brands. Not at all. It's just not what we would personally book. But going off Laura's, no, would I? I don't know. See, I still don't know. But one brand that I do really want to sell with, and I think I'm going to book it, is um, a Rosa because I want to yes. go on a Rosa Senna. Senna. Senna, isn't it? And um, so a Rosa, when we was at the River Cruise, I mean, Emma, Avalon, and a Rosa. I'm going to say the three brands that i just loved the people and that it yeah I think the people make make the all the others were lovely but they yeah. were the three that created lasting memories for me so yeah um a rosa i mean it was donna that was in and it was an older ship but still even though it was an older ship and it was like very colorful but still yeah. a beautiful ship but yeah it was the warmth and the friendliness and we just felt so welcome Absolutely. on it yeah and i really think that goes a long way now the new ship has been launched for the family market so it'll be interesting to see our other cruisers going to be comfortable on there because is it all kids? I'm thinking probably not, but that's a question we can ask. I think it's going to be very seasonal, isn't it, at the end of the day? So obviously, a Rosa Center is intentionally built. And a Rosa as a brand are very family welcome. And I think they were the first, they, they are the pioneers of the cruising industry, the river cruising industry, I think. I think they were one of the first companies out there anyway. Um, and they pioneered like interconnecting cabins at River, which I think they were the first brand to do things like that. But Senna is their first purpose-built environmentally friendly ship as well with the battery power when she's in port as well 
Um, she's wider, I believe, than most ships. So she is, she is limited on the river she can sail, um, but she is a little bit wider to give the families more space as well. She's got kid clubs on board, which usually most river ships don't have. They may have a lounge that they say the kids can use, but this has a dedicated kids club on board, has interconnecting cabins, has family cabins. She's a beautiful, beautiful ship. Everything I've seen of this ship, I do have a trailer, I think, on my YouTube. I think it's live, um, but it, it's a beautiful ship, like for families as well. And I know one of her home ports is Amsterdam. So again, for people in the UK to get to her, it's really easy. And then you can definitely have an amazing kind of European city break as well in the summer holidays or school holidays as well. Yeah. And actually, when you, that makes sense, doesn't it? That I mean, funny enough, I was saying to Chris last week, I just feel really depressed on the holiday. Because everyone was on holiday. <laughs> but we're choosing not to go on holiday because our kids are growing up there. So we don't want yes. to go on holiday at these times because it's cheap enough. Yeah. So there's not as many kids. Um, but um, so yeah, if you sail outside that time, then it's going to be less anyway. But um, I just the ship's stunning. I'm dying to see it and see what it's like. It's it's a very more modern contemporary. And I think that's the other thing as well. A lot of the river ships are quite young. So uh, Rosa Donna is one of the older ships, and I believe at the time she was, I want to say thirty, but I could be wrong. It could be twenty. Wow. But she was definitely the, one of the older ships on the river at the time. But as you say, she was beautifully look, looked after. She definitely had character. I would say. And it's one of my favorite decors. And anybody who's been to kind of Walt Disney World, you've been to Epcot, and you went to Epcot before they started modernizing it, where it had a lot of 80s design aesthetic, that like late 80s, early 90s design aesthetic, where there's really colorful, really funky patterns everywhere. A Rosa Donna has a little bit of that character where there's a lot going on to your eyes. But I think that adds a certain amount of charm to her. And I think she definitely stood out, as you say, next to all Hello. the other ships, where all the other brands were kind of going, here's our newest, here's our latest, here's our greatest. And then a rogue so went the total opposite way. They were like, no, here's our bread and butter. This is our core ship that's been sailing for years. We've modernized her, but she's still got a lot of old character type of thing. And I was like, wow, she stood out so much next to the other ships. But as you say, that welcome, going into that family buffet as well. So they do buffet in the evenings, don't they, on their ships? But they are, Why they call the them restaurant? premium. Oh, I, they call oh, them right. premium buffets on board. Um, there is a restaurant, I believe, with speciality, um, but they include a package as the buffet, but they call it a premium buffet because there are made meals as well available to it but i think it was my favorite evening meal outside of obviously our experience on avalon from all the rivers we the ships we sampled just because the atmosphere was so cool it was really friendly really communal so if you want if you're somebody who loves going away and making friends i think a is really great for that because it does have that i think river in general actually because you don't it's free seating isn't it so you all sit yeah. freestyle as well so it's not a science seating like you get on ocean but you can't you do sit with other people just because the nature of Trying to say everyone together, but you do definitely make friends. We made loads of friends across that river sailing. Oh, we did, didn't we? Uh, before we go on to that, um, a Rosa Donna was built in 2002, so she's 20. Oh, she's not as old as I thought then. That explains the late noughties vibe I got from her then, definitely. Yeah. Kind of that late no- late noughties deco, which, like but I she say, had anyways, a pole. she did. She did big pool as well. No, was it? It was a round one. Was it big? Yeah, it was round, but it was, compared to the, like Avalon, she could have maybe two people in. Compared to Avalon, no, that, that, that was a hot tub, though. That was a proper pull. Yeah, I think like I, th- I remember Emerald and Scenic. Unfortunately, blur into one because we saw the two back to back, so I can never remember which one They're it is. But one of the ships. In... Oh, but the back. Oh my god! Did you know that they explain to you as well that the the water level comes up, so the actual pool can disappear because they there's a like a a, a lift platform underneath the pool that lifts up, so they can then turn that back of the ship into a cinema in the evenings as well. Wow. No. See, I want to do that now. <laughs> but that's your top end. We're just rambling on about all different... I bet it's... <laughs> that's how I feel about it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, talking about eating together, because that is my worst nightmare on a cruise, is I always go and say table for two or table for four, I forgot the kids. Um, but by the end of it, we'd met a few people. And by the end of it, we started off as a table of four, didn't we? And at the end, we were on massive circles because... Well, we were all jumping around as well, though. Yeah, because, and again, it was a busman's holiday, you know, with in a nice way. It was obviously a, a travel agent experiential trip with the press as well, like yourselves there as well. So it was, we were together as a group and we were there to experience Avalon type of thing. But we did definitely as well, because you go out and you do an excursion. So maybe you do an excursion with one, one group of people and then you cross pollinate then as well. It's like, oh, well, they're from so-and-so place. Why don't you come sit with us and have a drink together? Then you're carrying your multiple drinks down to the dining room. Do you, do you remember that experience as well, where we were literally carrying drinks from the <laughs> yeah. lounge down to the dining room? But then we were also taking multiple glasses of wine <laughs> from the dining room back upstairs again. Um, but then you just push your chat in the conversations flowing about where you've been, what you've experienced. Oh, what tour did you do? Oh, great. We did this one. We did that. 
I think it's just generally it's great for kind of having this amazing communal experience where everyone's yeah. together. You get to share your experience for the day, the things you did, what you got to see, and the excitement as well of what you're going to do tomorrow. Oh, so what are you doing tomorrow then? Have you seen this one on the schedule? I'm thinking of doing this one. What do you think? <laughs> that you just naturally that happens then of people just talk yeah. and then obviously drinks flow it it's such a lovely atmosphere on board just because everyone's yeah, just thoroughly it. enjoying the food the drink the experience everything about it it just creates this lovely but there atmosphere. were tables for two i'm sure i don't think you have to mix if you don't want to i'm sure you don't uh, that's something you'd have to ask booking like you could technically so you could sit across from each other but you would be next to somebody else like the tables for two yeah. were very close to each other so you were technically sat with somebody. So if you wanted to sit completely by yourself and ignore the person next to you, but quite literally, you'd be like shoulder, not shoulder, but like they're, they're next to you type oh, of thing. Yeah, was... yeah. I mean, we once sat next. In fact, no, me and Donna once sat, I did it on our own and, we, and there was another couple on because it's like in a row and they weren't that close to us. No, they weren't. I'm not going to say a meter. I wouldn't, I wouldn't get my bum in and out to go to the loo. Of course, I'm telling you. <laughs> there's a lot of booths. That's the one thing I will say. There's a lot of booth seating on board. So that's the thing that, so I think there were a couple of round tables. So I remember having breakfast at the round table one morning and there's a lot of booths. I'm trying to find pictures now to try to refresh my memory of it. I think like it's not a major issue. You can totally, if you wanted to, go as a couple and have like a more intimate meal, but you are close to people. It's not like you've got, it's not like a proper restaurant where you've got lashings of space. You know, there is a limited amount of space on the river ship. So you are, you are cozy to people anyway, even if you did decide that you didn't want to be overly chatty. But like I say, the atmosphere is so lovely on board. I'd be surprised if you didn't make friends with somebody. Because by the end of the sailing as well, there was obviously American guests on board as well. So you had like British guests, obviously from the UK trade, and you had American guests as well. And we were chatting to the Americans by the end of the sailing, even though they were doing totally different experiences from us. Just because, again, you just start chatting as the week goes on type of thing. And obviously we struck off the friendship we did, but it was purely because we kept bumping into each other on the first day. Everywhere we went, we kept seeing each other. And then we met Gary and Alistair. Yes, which then leads me to where I am now, Merlin Travel Group. So actually, this River Cruise launched our friendship, this podcast, and my new relationship where I am at Merlin Travel Group as well. Yeah, so, so these are... Pretty life-changing River Cruise. <laughs> you know, thank you, guys. <laughs> so if you were to choose your next River Cruise, where? Not, not who with, but where? From what little knowledge that I have been given, and I'm learning as I do more and more River, um, if you want to explore kind of, I guess, let's let's backtrack on that one then, is rather than go kind of what river would you like to do, is what type of experience would you want? Because each river region has a very different type of river cruise experience. So if you are somebody who wants to go more for like a wine river cruise, then obviously going through kind of the, the French rivers are going to give you more of that experience type of thing. Whereas if you want to go maybe for more, like we did, we did obviously the Danube and we went through from kind of um, Bratislava, not Bratislava, we did Budapest, sorry, wasn't it, right the way through to just outside. We did, but I mean, we started in Budapest, oh, yeah. sorry. Yeah. But that was really good from a kind of a historical point of view, because oh, obviously amazing. that trail does follow a lot of like the war history as well. Yeah. So every single port we visited had a massive impact for the war, as well as having amazing food and wine and drink. I wouldn't necessarily say that that's a wine tour trip, if you get me. And there are other yeah. tours you could do. Equally as well, like if you want to follow the flowers as well, there's some fantastic ones at the beginning of the year as well from kind of Amsterdam following the tulip fields as well. So there's whole river sailings dedicated for people who maybe want to go into the tulip trails and follow Amsterdam and do kind of the rivers and the canals of Amsterdam as well. Um, but there's rivers in Portugal as well that are going to be the slightly more warm weather, which again, you're going to have that kind of, you know, more foody vibe and more um, drinky vibe as well. Uh, and then Italy as well. There's a river in Italy you can do a river cruise from as well. So again, it's a really fantastic way as well to kind of travel through there, which again is another wine country. So I think it's more try and find the type of river, the type of experience you want, and then match the river to that. That's probably if you've never done it before. Because if I if I can't remember the rivers and it's my job to, you're not going to be able to work it out either on your first river cruise. So maybe have a think about whether you want something a bit more active, whether you want something a bit more relaxing. You want to explore castles because, and again, the, the, the brands will know better than us. That's why we invited them on because they know the rivers better than we do. They can then say, if you want to find castles and you want to do history, then this river and this tour will be the best tour for you to do. Whereas there's a better one for foodie. There's a better one for culture. There's a better one for music. Um, that's the best way. And that's how I've been trained anyway, is don't stress about learning every river because it's very difficult because there's a lot of them. Just learn what ask, what people want to do, what type of river they want to do, and then match the person to the river and then the brand. You, you could also do the Ganges. Yes. And you can do the Mekong. Which apparently are on the rise now as well. And the Nile, don't forget as well, you've got the oh, Nile. No. Yep, yep. So I think if I could choose my, my next river cruise, I've done I've done the Danube twice, and I just think there's nothing 
more beautiful than sailing past the, the parliament in Hungary in Budapest. It's just stunning. I think I fell in love with Budapest, but I want to do France. I want to do, I want to stop in Paris. I want to dock in Paris. I want to definitely go to the Louvre. I want to test champagne and wine and stop at all the wine regions. So, and see French castles because they're like fairy tale castles. So that'd be what I'd choose. I don't have a preference. I really don't. Um, I, I generally would love all of them. I really would. Um, the me- I, I'd love to do the long distance ones. So like you say, the Mekong is on my list definitely now. I definitely want to do the Mekong. And the more training I do on the Mekong, the more excited I am. Because I don't think, and the reason why, I don't think I would land tour the Mekong uh, and do that part of the world. I don't no, think I, I would wouldn't. just because, I and I'm quite a venturous traveler. So it's not that I'm afraid to do it. But I think it's the best way to experience so much of, you know, that part of the world um, by doing on a river ship type of thing. And then having somebody, as you say, you can be as involved in excursions as you want. You can do every excursion available to you or you could self-explore if you want to just get off the ship and go and explore yourself. But I think having that tour program and knowing how good the tour program is and the excursions, I think doing someone like the Mekong, you know, exploring Vietnam and Cambodia, places like that by river would be amazing. Definitely. And I mean, who is it that, I don't know if I watched Joanna Lumley do a river cruise. I watched Joe McDonald's, but I'm sure Joanna Lumley did one as well. And that was the Ganges. It was Joanna Lumley. Um, and that was really interesting to watch. And I think that might have been with the more boutique one, luxury one. Uh, Uniworld. Yeah, and I think that was with Uniworld. It looked beautiful. So I know Jane did APT, so she did an APT river tour. Jane. Jo- I know Jane did, like she's your right. <laughs> it was literally, as I said, I was like... Yeah, see, no, for Jane, which is... What? So for any of our American listeners, <laughs> Jane McDonald is like a British icon in the cruising industry because she had a TV series forever. <laughs> I think there's like nine <laughs> seasons of it, of Cruising with Jane McDonald. She's an ex... I say it, she's a, she was a cabaret singer on the cruise ships as well, which I think is what made her fame. She then became a singer on UK TV and she's got this... And we adore Jane. Absolutely. She's an icon, she's a gay icon as well. So there's another element wrapped into this. Uh, but she's got a reputation for being kind of like a good but not great singer. <laughs> yeah. But she had this TV show forever. So whenever gays talk about cruising, guaranteed Jane McDonald gets brought up. Uh, but Jane McDonald did an APT River Cruise as well on one of her episodes. But what she's famous for is at the end of her episode, she will do a music performance number as well. <laughs> and if anyone ever wants to laugh, I think just look up Jane McDonald and Ray of Light <laughs> or... Jane McDonald, J Ho, <laughs> she sung J Ho. No, 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 no. My, my favourite is um, what is it? Cake by the Ocean. <laughs> I mean, I love her. I love her. I think she's just like a queen. But absolutely, but I didn't need singing a bit at the end. No, we absolutely. We and I'd love if one day we could get Jane McDonald on the podcast. I think we could just have <laughs> us the no. third member of the podcast. <laughs> But I'm determined one day to do a Jane McDonald parody on one of my like ship tours or something. Oh, you wouldn't get this in Wayfield, would you? <laughs> I think you were a really dodgy musical number at the end of the podcast, at the end of the video. I ain't never, ever, ever going to sing in public, ever. So you're safe with me. <laughs> never. So, I mean, that, that that has been a complete jumble of me and Kieran just brain dumping, really. <laughs> um, but it was our introduction to why we love River cruising and yep. i think it's like with everything in life if, if you if you like something it just you do get excited about it when you talk yeah. about it and yeah. anyone that listens knows we don't have any structure we don't don't do structure <laughs> but um but we, we are going to have there. our show notes for this episode was let's do an introduction to river cruising and that was the show note <laughs> what else are we going to talk about river cruising <laughs> see where we get to <laughs> you know what though if you if you know something you don't need notes do you because it comes no, from the heart no. i really believe that yeah. and with all all of our cruise things we sometimes have notes on the side but it does come from the heart and we we, we know our subject and if we don't we admit it which um we're not experts and we don't know it all but we are going to get experts on to talk about <laughs> yeah, their own brands. And this is the introduction to that. So we've sort of sneaky peeked it all already. So we've got Lloyd and Lisa from Avalon, who we love dearly. Mm-hmm. Who else have we got on? So we've got from Arosa. Erin, who have we got? Lucia. So we've got Lucia coming from Arosa. Um, and like we can fangirl about Lucia for, for, for hours and hours yeah. and hours. She's yeah. such an incredible woman. <laughs> Such such a such an ambassador for the river cruise industry. And the one thing I will say is all three of our guests coming in on, they're all fantastic ambassadors for the river cruise industry. 
they all work very closely together. So it's not one of those things of one's better than the other. They all know where no. they sit in the industry and they all support the industry from top to bottom, from value to ultra luxury type of thing. They all want the river cruise industry to be showcased as best as possible. So they will share kind of what it's like to do a river cruise. That's why we kind of talked about our first introduction to it to kind of softly wake you into it type of thing. They will be better explaining about their brands, what their brands offer and what their, what their strong points are. Um, but they will just generally share with you how fantastic River is as an option. That she is incredible, absolutely. She was her presentation at the Clear River Conference well, was phenomenal. I think amazing. you couldn't help but be moved by by her experience in the industry. So we're really blessed that she is coming on the episode. Uh, and then lastly, we've got um, Becky from APT Travel Marvel who's going to come on. Um, which again, I think because both of us have said when we went on to the Travel Marvel ship to experience it, we were actually really, really blown away and impressed by that ship. Yeah. Um, and the way that they approach river cruising as well. Again, me and Sierra are premium cruisers. I think mean, there's no harm in us admitting that that's our preference. But again, Travel Marvel is a lovely premium, relaxed cruise as well. So I think they're three very different cruise lines that cater to different sides of the industry. But what they do, they do very well. And they are definitely towards the top of kind of that premium, casual luxury cruise experience. And I really just want to go just to sit in that Irish bar as it's sailing down the river because it looks amazing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so we've got some exciting guests. So we've handpicked our guests because we've we've chosen people that we think represent the industry that can that that we've got a relationship with and can answer any questions. But, and that, that's the thing as well is they can talk from their own experience. These guys obviously live and breathe river. So whereas I can't remember the name of every river and what the perks are of each river, they definitely can. So we'll try and get them to kind of talk about their favorite rivers a little bit as well and give some tips on kind of, you know, for those customers who are looking for maybe a more wine river, which river's the best. So guys, I hope you've enjoyed this episode. I say we do have a particular brand here, Imagine Cruising, but I should, hopefully you can see we definitely just love talking about cruising anyway. So I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Um, Keep an eye out now for the next three weeks. We do have these three amazing episodes with Avalon, with ABT, and with Arosa. We picked the three A's on purpose because they're easier to remember. Um, but we are really excited to have them come on board and just share just river cruising with us and what their different brands have to offer. If you do have any questions, then definitely send them along. We will try our best to answer them and hopefully get them into the brands as well before the episode goes out. Equally, guys, if you are interested in booking a river cruise and you do enjoy listening along to this episode, then I would love to help you do that. You could find me online anywhere at magical-traveler.com or on all social media under Magical T-R-V-L-R. I do have a river ship tour of Avalon and Vision, so you can definitely hunt that down on YouTube, as well as a few cabin tours of a few ships that we were able to get them for. And I know, Sarah, you've got some content on your social, and you've got a few guys on your website. Where's the best place the guys can find that? Yep, so you can find information about Avalon and Emma Waterways, and that's on cruising for all, cruisingwithkids.com. Yeah, thanks. Other than that, guys, I hope you've enjoyed this episode. If you have, definitely, and you're watching this on YouTube, please do give us a like and a subscribe that lets YouTube know you've enjoyed it and it recommends it to others. And equally as well, if you're listening along on Apple Podcasts, we would love you to review us just because Apple will then know that you've enjoyed it and it will recommend it to other people as well. Other than that, guys, thanks a lot. I'm going to see you on the next episode. Bye. Bye.